The series begins by showing Tumo, a girl who receives an early morning phone call from her friend. As she tries to answer the call, she accidentally drops her phone under the bed. With the help of a clothes hanger, she retrieves her phone and finds a $10 bill, which brightens her mood. However, she soon realizes that the phone screen has cracked, which makes her feel sad. Just as she's processing her mixed emotions, her phone rings again. It was Fu Pei who had called her earlier, telling her that he'll pick her up shortly. As she places her phone on the table, she notices a piece of paper with her college plans written on it, which brings a smile to her face. She quickly gets dressed in a white dress and heads outside to meet Fu Pei. When she sees him, she's in awe and feels like she's meeting her idol. Fu Pei takes her for a ride on his bicycle, and on the way, they accidentally collide with another cyclist. The third cyclist turns out to be Gu Weiyi, a friend of Fu Pei. Concerned for Tu Mo's well-being, Weiyi examines her to make sure she's not hurt. Weiyi soon realizes that Tu Mo's skirt has gotten caught in the bicycle wheel, causing the accident. In an effort to free her skirt, he rips it, much to Tu Mo's surprise and dismay. Despite this setback, Fu Pei urges Tu Mo to leave with him immediately as she has a job interview to attend. After arriving at the company, Tumo waits in the waiting room, feeling sad about her torn skirt. Fu Pei is completely absorbed in playing a game on his phone, seemingly oblivious to her distress. Suddenly, Fu Pei's friend calls him, asking for his help in playing a game at an internet cafe. Initially reluctant, Fu Pei finally agrees when his friend offers to give him any in-game item he desires. With some hesitation, Fu Pei asks Tumo for permission to leave, saying that he will buy her a new skirt in the meantime. Though she is upset about being left alone, Tumo agrees to his request. Meanwhile, Weiyi arrives at his class, and his friend asks to borrow a pen. As he searches his bag for a pen, Weiyi discovers a sanitary pad, which surprises him. He empties his bag to find out how it got there and realizes that he accidentally took Tumo's bag while helping her on the road. When Professor Zhang enters the classroom, Weiyi quickly hides the sanitary pad under the table to avoid embarrassment. As Tumo prepares for her job interview test, the staff at the company are surprised to see that her skirt is not as torn as they had expected. The interview commences, and one of the female staff members asks Tumo to introduce herself. Tumo introduces herself, mentioning that she is currently studying accounting. The staff members seem puzzled and ask her why she is applying for an advertising internship when her major is in accounting. Tumo explains that while she is studying accounting, her true passion lies in advertising. Unfortunately, when she was preparing for her university entrance exams, her family pressured her to choose to account as her major instead. Tumo explains that she has a genuine passion for advertising, and has been studying advertising content, reading creative books, and attending advertising classes throughout her time in college. She expresses her hope that the company will give her a chance to prove herself. However, when the staff asks to see a graphic sample of her work, Tumo confidently reaches into her bag, only to realize that the documents she had brought were not advertising graphics, but instead belonged to Weiyi. The staff scold Tumo for wasting their time, thinking that she had been playing with them, and ultimately reject her job application. Tumo apologizes for the misunderstanding and leaves the room feeling embarrassed. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Weiyi tells Zhang that he did not bring his exam card and asks permission to keep him in Zhang's project selection exam. He is feeling embarrassed and defeated as he walks out of the classroom after being refused permission to take the project selection exam. He is so lost in his thoughts that he doesn't notice Tumo's phone ringing in his hand. As he looks at the screen, he sees that it's Fu Pei calling. Fu Pei is worried because he hasn't heard back from Tumo about her interview. When Weiyi answers the phone, Fu Pei asks about Tumo's interview. As Tumo walked home, she couldn't help but feel a bit embarrassed by the earlier incident with Weiyi. But her thoughts were interrupted by her phone ringing. It was Fu Pei asking to meet with her and Weiyi. Curious, Tumo agreed to the meeting. When they met, Fu Pei introduced Tumo to Weiyi and Weiyi immediately requested to exchange bags. Tumo was puzzled by this request but agreed nonetheless. To her surprise, Weiyi then opened his bag to reveal its contents, leaving Tumo and Fu Pei astonished. Weiyi then asked Tumo to check her bag, and she realized that her sanitary pad was missing. Weiyi then explained that he had accidentally taken it and left it under his desk in class. Tumo couldn't help but laugh and told Weiyi that he could keep it for the next time. Weiyi fell silent, realizing that he had left it in his classroom. Tumo joked that he could return the pad next time, and then left Fu Pei and Weiyi behind. Tumo arrived at her dorm room looking happy, prompting her roommate Wang Shan to ask if she passed her internship interview or if Fu Pei had finally confessed his love. Tumo told Wang Shan about Wei Yi, whom she found amusing. The next day, Tumo attended her campus class when suddenly the lecturer's laptop stopped working. 
the lecturer asked her assistant to call the serviceman and shortly after, Wei Yi walked into the classroom. Thinking that he was the serviceman, the lecturer asked him to repair her laptop immediately. The students were excited to see a handsome serviceman, but soon the assistant lecturer arrived with an actual service worker and the lecturer asked Wei Yi to stop working. However, he refused since he was almost finished. After successfully repairing the lecturer's laptop, Wei Yi approached Tu Mo, who looked nervous. He asked her for help to retrieve the key that was right under her desk. Wei Yi called for the key and thanked Tu Mo before leaving the room. In the physics practice room, Professor Xu runs into Wei Yi who didn't take the project selection exam with Jiang. Xu explains that many other students are vying for a spot in Jiang's project and urges Wei Yi to retake the exam to avoid the physics department receiving a bad evaluation. In the meantime, Tumo and Fu Pei are enjoying each other's company when Tumo receives a message from a company asking her to come in for an interview. She's unsure of the address, so she shows it to Fu Pei who helps her locate it. Fu Pei offers to drive her there, but Tumo declines, still hurt from being left behind by him in the past. However, Fu Pei promises never to leave her again and eventually convinces her to let him escort her to the interview. Meanwhile, Wei Yi comes to a mobile phone supply store to repair his phone screen. As he finished fixing his own phone, he noticed Tu Mo entering the store with a phone in her hand. Curious, he asked her what was wrong with her phone, and Tu Mo replied that her screen was broken. Wei Yi quickly offered to help her fix it and asked the shopkeeper to borrow the equipment needed for the job. Tu Mo was hesitant at first, not wanting to inconvenience Wei Yi, but he insisted on helping her. After a few minutes, Wei Yi managed to replace the screen of Tu Mo's phone, much to her relief. The next day, Tumo was excited to go for a job interview, but her excitement quickly turned to disappointment when Fu Pei didn't show up to accompany her to the interview. She tried to contact him but received no response. Feeling let down, she decided to take the bus alone. However, on the way to the interview, she was almost hit by a motorcyclist and then had her bag snatched by two men on a motorcycle. In the aftermath of the attack, Tu Mo was injured and in pain. She tried to call Fu Pei again, but it was Wei Yi who answered the phone. Wei Yi, Fu Pei's roommate, promised to let Fu Pei know about the situation and tried to call him several times, but he didn't pick up. In the meantime, Wei Yi rushed to Tu Mo's location. Tu Mo is surprised to see Wei Yi at the bus stop, who has come to pick her up. She's disappointed that Fu Pei didn't come as promised. Wei Yi invites her to take a taxi, and on the way, he notices her injured hand and cleans the wound with great care. Tumo initially resists using a wheelchair. Tumo is embarrassed to use the wheelchair, but Wei Yi encourages her to not feel ashamed. The doctor treats Tumo's wound and asks why she's using a wheelchair. He mistakenly thinks they're a couple and smiles. After the treatment, Wei Yi again offers the wheelchair to Tumo, who initially refuses but eventually accepts it. Outside the room, Wei Yi watched Fu Pei take over pushing Tumo's wheelchair. He knew he had to step back and let her boyfriend take charge. Fu Pei thanked Wei Yi for looking after Tumo and they all set off to get the medicine. However, after Fu Pei rushed off to get the medicine, he left Tu Mo behind without a word. She tried to follow him on her own but soon found that her wheelchair wasn't easy to maneuver. Tu Mo became upset and tears began to well up in her eyes. Wei Yi could see how upset Tu Mo was and knew he had to help her. Without hesitation, he stepped in and began to push her wheelchair. Tu Mo remained silent, lost in her own thoughts. Wei Yi could see that she was crying and decided to do something to cheer her up. He took a tissue from his pocket and threw it toward her, causing Tu Mo to look up at him in surprise. After Tumo returned to her dormitory, she immediately shared her experience with her roommates. However, they seemed uninterested and made unimportant comments, leaving Tumo feeling upset. Soon after, Fu Pei called Tumo to check if she had eaten. He had forgotten to send her food because she was engrossed in playing games at the internet cafe. He tried to calm her down and suggested they have dinner together, but Tumo refused and hung up the phone abruptly. The next day, Wei Yi arrived at the physics laboratory to find Shu waiting for him. Wei Yi guessed the reason for Shu's presence and immediately explained that he would not meet with Jiang and warned Shu not to come there again. Shu tried to evade the topic and hinted that he just wanted to chat with Wei Yi, but Wei Yi remained distrustful. Eventually, Shu left, promising to come back again. Fu Pei finished his basketball game and rushed to catch up with Tu Mo, who was still lost in her memories of their high school days. He caught her by surprise and brought her back to reality. Tumo was happy to see him and they talked for a while about their high school memories. Fu Pei reminded her of the time when they made a promise to be together after graduation. Tumo smiled at the memory and blushed a little. When they were talking, Fu Pei noticed Tumo's injury and asked her about it. She explained that she had fallen on the way to the interview yesterday. Fu Pei immediately felt guilty for forgetting to send her food and not checking up on her earlier. He tried to make it up to her by offering to accompany her to the interview but realized he had a conflicting event to attend. Some Sometime later, Tumo is seen waiting at the bus stop, anxious about going to the interview alone. Suddenly, Wei Yi arrives and explains that Fu Pei asked him to accompany Tumo because he had a basketball game scheduled. Wei Yi initially refuses, but Fu Pei threatens to
to upload a video of him, forcing Wei Yi to reluctantly agree. They wait for the bus and Wei Yi tries to convince Tu Mo to call Fu Pei and tell him she doesn't want to go with Wei Yi. However, Tu Mo refuses and insists on going to the interview. The bus arrives, and they board it, with Wei Yi still feeling uneasy about the situation. Despite Wei Yi's initial reluctance to sit next to Tu Mo, he eventually found himself drawn to her and even put on one of her headphones to listen in. When she boarded the bus and saw them sitting together, Wei Yi pretended that they were a couple to avoid any further questions about his exam problems. However, she persisted and told Tu Mo about Wei Yi's exam issues and how he could still have a chance to retake the test if he met with Jiang. Despite Xu's encouragement, Wei Yi refused to retake the test, insisting that it would be unfair to the other participants who had already taken it. Tu Mo felt guilty about the exam incident because it was their bags being exchanged that caused Wei Yi to miss the test. Wei Yi, however, reassured Tu Mo that it was not her fault. They then listened to the comedy show together. Tu Mo and Wei Yi seemed to be growing closer, despite their initial awkwardness. Arriving at her destination, Tumo disembarked from the bus, as she walked, a motorcycle whizzed past her, causing her to jump in fright and instinctively grab onto Wei Yi who was walking next to her. Wei Yi steadied her and they continued walking toward the building. Upon reaching the building, Tumo entered alone while Wei Yi waited outside. The office looked shabby and the employees seemed to be in a frenzy, hastily scribbling on leaflets. When Tumo met the head of the company, she noticed that he was irate and shouting on the phone about collecting a debt. Despite his rude behavior, Tumo remained polite and introduced herself for the interview. The head of the company looked at her resume and pointed out that her major did not match the job she was applying for, and asked her about her salary expectations. Tumo explained that gaining work experience was more important to her than the salary. The head of the company then shouted at a courier before abruptly ending the interview and asking Tumo Tumo to leave. When Tumo stepped out of the building, Wei Yi was busy scribbling on the ground. They quickly walked to the bus stop, where Tumo sighed heavily with a sad face. Wei Yi, noticing her distress, tried to comfort her by reaching for a packet of bread from his bag. Before he could offer it, Tumo thanked him for accompanying her to the interview and insisted on treating him to dinner in return. Although Wei Yi refused, citing unfinished tasks, Tumo was persistent and convinced him to join her at a fast food restaurant nearby. As they ate, Wei Yi's attention was caught by the top toys offered as gifts from the restaurant. While Fu Pei sat in the room, he tried calling Tu Mo multiple times but she didn't answer. Suddenly, Wei Yi arrived home which surprised Fu Pei. When asked, Wei Yi simply mentioned that Tu Mo had bought him dinner. Fu Pei wondered why Wei Yi had let Tu Mo pay, but Wei Yi questioned why she shouldn't. Curious about Tu Mo's interview results, Fu Pei asked Wei Yi who only replied that she might be asleep. As Wei Yi began his task on his laptop, Fu Pei inquired about Wei Yi's thoughts on Tu Mo, causing him to pause and recall their journey home together. Earlier on the bus, Tu Mo had dozed off several times and ended up leaning on Wei Yi's shoulder. At first, he nudged her away but later felt guilty and placed a tissue on his shoulder so she could sleep more comfortably. In the present moment, Wei Yi responded to Fu Pei's question about Tu Mo by saying he didn't pay much attention to her face during their dinner. However, he soon became distracted, searching for a comedy show that Tu Mo had mentioned watching online. In the women's dorm room, Tu Mo's friends Wang Shan and Meng Lu were eager to know the outcome of her interview. Tu Mo explained that the company was not very professional and even the leader told her that her major did not match the position she had applied for. Her friends tried to comfort her and Wang Shan asked about her dinner. Tu Mo revealed that she had eaten with Wei Yi, whom she thought her friends wouldn't know. However, to her surprise, they knew him well and were shocked that Tu Mo had gone out to dinner with him. Wang Shan mentioned that Wei Yi was always competing with her for scholarships on campus, and Meng Lu added that he was known as a good-looking student. Tu Mo wondered why she hadn't known about him before, and her friends joked that she spent all her time watching dramas and following Fu Pei everywhere. Unfortunately, Wei Yi had become a negative example lately after failing an exam due to not carrying an exam card. Many students gossiped about him, accusing him of being arrogant because of his intelligence. Upon hearing this rumor, Tu Mo felt guilty about Wei Yi. The following day, Tu Mo arrived at the Faculty of Physics with Se Yu Yin, a senior of Wei Yi. She went to meet Xu, who initially didn't recognize her but later remembered that she was Wei Yi's girlfriend. Tu Mo explained her purpose of wanting to help Wei Yi get a chance for a follow-up exam. Xu then introduced her to Zhang, who seemed uninterested in Wei Yi's request for a follow-up exam. When Zhang saw Tu Mo, Xu introduced her as Wei Yi's girlfriend. Zhang stated that Wei Yi would have to show his ability if he wanted to join his project. Tu Mo tried to persuade Zhang by explaining that he would see Wei Yi's capability if he gave him a chance. Xu added that Wei Yi had been the best physics faculty student for three consecutive years, and Zhang would regret losing him to another professor's project. After hearing this, Zhang finally handed Tu Mo some exam papers and asked her to have Wei Yi take the test. Tu Mo was delighted and grateful and thanked Zhang before leaving his room. 
Tumo then hurries to the men's dormitory, feeling guilty about the mishap with Wei Yi's bag that caused him to miss Jiang's project selection exam. She seeks help from Fu Pei to call Wei Yi and explains her predicament. Despite Fu Pei's reassurances that it wasn't her fault and that she need not feel guilty, Tumo insists on meeting with Wei Yi to deliver the exam sheet to him and make amends. Fu Pei offers to accompany her to find Wei Yi together. Fu Pei appears jealous and asks Tumo about her opinion of Wei Yi. Perplexed by the question, Tumo avoids giving a clear answer as she is more concerned about meeting Wei Yi and resolving the issue. After Tumo and Fu Pei arrived at the physics lab, they saw Wei Yi working on his invention. Tumo was struck by how handsome Wei Yi looked in his research clothes. However, Fu Pei teased Wei Yi and Tumo tried to stop him. Their commotion made Wei Yi realize that Tumo and Fu Pei were there. Tumo explained to Wei Yi that she had met Jiang, who had asked her to give Wei Yi the exam question sheet. However, Wei Yi was annoyed and snickered at Tumo for meddling with his problems. Tumo tried to provoke Wei Yi by saying that Jiang didn't need him since he couldn't solve the physics problems. Wei Yi, not wanting his pride to be demeaned, took the exam question sheet and did it. Tumo and Fu Pei waited for Wei Yi to finish the exam in the lab, and Fu Pei fell asleep. Tumo, feeling bored, started drawing cartoons on the board. Finally, Wei Yi finished all the problems, and with a smile, he handed the answer paper to Tumo. She was thrilled to see Wei Yi smile for the first time. Tumo then woke up Fu Pei and invited both men to eat together. When Tumo and Fu Pei arrived at the restaurant, Tumo was disappointed to see Fu Pei engrossed in calling his gamer friends, ignoring her. Her disappointment only deepened when the waiter mistook her for Fu Pei's girlfriend, and Fu Pei did nothing to correct the assumption. Annoyed and hurt, Tumo decided to drink the beer that the waiter offered her, hoping to drown her sorrows. Her reckless drinking alarmed both Fu Pei and Wei Yi, who was sitting across from her. Just then, she walked into the restaurant and joined their table, teasing Wei Yi about his supposed relationship with Tumo. To Tumo's surprise, Wei Yi calmly admitted to dating her, and Fu Pei couldn't hide his jealousy at the revelation. On the way back from the party, Fu Pei noticed Tamo was drunk and offered to help her. However, Tamo was too proud to accept his help and Wei Yi joined in to help. Together, they made sure Tamo got back safely to the front gate of the girl's dormitory. Once Tamo was safely inside, Fu Pei couldn't help but ask Wei Yi why Shu thought he and Tamo were dating. Wei Yi explained that he had pretended to be Tamo's boyfriend to keep Shu from disturbing them on the bus during Tamo's job interview. The next day, Wang Shan woke Tamo up because Fu Pei had been calling her since morning. Tamo checked her phone and found out that Fu Pei had been trying to reach her. She also learned that an accounting firm had asked her to come in for an interview at their company. The morning after the incident at the bar, Fu Pei is anxious and pacing outside the girl's dormitory waiting for Tumo. When Wang Shan comes out, he asks her to help him contact Tumo, but she tells him that Tumo has just woken up and will be down soon. Tumo emerges from the dormitory and tries to leave, but Fu Pei stops her, wanting to talk about the previous night. Tumo, however, insists that she doesn't remember anything and quickly leaves, leaving Fu Pei behind. Meanwhile, Wei Yi meets with Jiang at his office. Jiang has reviewed Wei Yi's exam results and is impressed, inviting Wei Yi to join his project with other top performing students from the previous exam. Tumo is thrilled to have been accepted as an intern at the accounting firm and is determined to work hard to secure a permanent position. Her supervisor is optimistic about her potential and hopes she will thrive in the role. After her interview, Tumo heads to the campus canteen for lunch. While carrying her food tray, she calls her mother, Aichi, to share the good news. However, her mother is not entirely pleased with the situation, as she believes that Tumo should work in their hometown so she can save money on rent and food. A few days have passed since Tumo started her internship at the accounting firm, and she was on her way back to the dormitory after work when she encountered a chaotic scene at the bus stop. Many people were fighting to get on the bus, and as a result, Tumo couldn't get a seat. Tired of the commotion, Tumo decided to walk back to the dormitory. On the way, she received a call from her mother, Ai Chi, who was worried about her safety. Ai Chi suggested that Tumo stay at her friend Xu Ping's apartment, which was located near the office. The apartment was currently empty, and Tumo only needed to clean it. Initially hesitant, Tumo eventually agreed as she didn't want to argue over the bus any longer. Meanwhile, Wei Yi started working on Jiang's project in the physics laboratory. Yin, another student joining the project, was eager to meet Wei Yi and introduced herself. However, Wei Yi appeared distant and unresponsive, despite her friendliness. In the meantime, Tumo had moved into a spacious apartment, but found the interior too boring, so she spent time cleaning and redecorating several rooms. The next day, while enjoying a snack in the rain, her mother Ai Chi called and reminded her not to dirty Xu Ping's apartment. Tumo lied and said that she had not made the place dirty, although there was food waste piled up on the table and floor. Ai Chi also mentioned that Xu Ping's son would be visiting the next day, which surprised Tumo. However, after hearing that he would be coming tomorrow, Tumo relaxed, thinking that she could clean up the food waste before he arrived. As the night fell, Tumo decided to watch a horror movie by herself. 
However, her peaceful night turned into a nightmare when she suddenly heard someone entering the apartment. Fearing for her safety, Tumo shouted and held a fruit knife as a weapon. But to her surprise, it was Wei Yi who entered the apartment. Wei Yi was confused as to why he found Tumo in his mother's apartment, which was now filled with food waste and decorated with Doryman stickers on the walls. It turned out that Wei Yi's mother, Xu Ping, was a close friend of Tumo's mother, but the two of them had no idea about their mother's friendship. Tumo explained to Wei Yi that she had planned to clean everything up the next day because her mother had informed her that Wei Yi would be coming. Wei Yi then clarified that he had intended to come the next day, but due to the heavy rain, he couldn't find a taxi to return to his dormitory, so he decided to stay at his mother's apartment instead. Tumo then called Ai Chi because her mother did not tell her that Xu Ping's son was a boy. Tumo was surprised to find out that Xu Ping's son was Wei Yi. Her mother laughed happily and didn't mind if Tumo lived with Xu Ping's son in the apartment. However, Tumo expressed her desire to move back to the dormitory, but her mother forbid her. Later that night, Wei Yi, unable to sleep, asked Tumo to exchange rooms with him. But when he saw that she was suffering from a stomach ache, he immediately gave her some medicine from his apartment. Unfortunately, after taking the medicine, Tumo fainted. Wei Yi checked the medicine and discovered that it had expired, so he called an ambulance and Tumo was rushed to the hospital. The doctor who had treated Tumo's wounds before was surprised to see Wei Yi there with his girlfriend and explained that Tumo had an intestinal infection from eating unclean food. Her condition had been aggravated by taking expired medication, and she only needed to be treated at home overnight. After being rushed to the hospital, Tumo was treated and kept in the hospital for observation. While she was recovering, Wei Yi stayed by her side, protecting her from a boy in the next bed who kept throwing medical equipment at her. Wei Yi even shielded her with his own body to keep her safe. Tumo was surprised to wake up and find Wei Yi's face so close to hers, and she realized that his hand had been accidentally pressing the infusion hose. Wei Yi quickly got up and checked on her, making sure she was okay. The night wore on and Wei Yi stayed by Tumo's side, patiently watching over her until he eventually fell asleep on a bench. Meanwhile, Tumo slept soundly, finally feeling safe and protected. The next morning, Wei Yi woke up and immediately checked on Tumo, making sure she was comfortable and well cared for. Soon after, Fu Pei called Wei Yi, asking to borrow his shoes for a basketball game. Wei Yi declined, explaining that he was at the hospital with Tu Mo, who was still recovering. When Tu Mo woke up, she immediately checked her appearance on a camera and noticed that her hair was greasy. She asked Wei Yi if he had a hair tie, but he simply replied that he didn't have one. After tending to the administration of Tu Mo's care, Wei Yi left the hospital room to fetch a hair tie for Tu Mo's greasy hair. However, when he returned, he found Fu Pei had already met Tu Mo and was inquiring about her condition. Wei Yi, who had secretly been developing feelings for Tu Mo, was discouraged by Fu Pei's presence and didn't give the hair tie to Tu Mo as he had originally planned. Wei Yi then handed Tu Mo her medicine. Fu Pei curiously asked how Wei Yi was able to take Tu Mo to the hospital. Both Tu Mo and Wei Yi stumbled over their words as they tried to explain that they had simply run into each other on the street, with Tu Mo asking Wei Yi for help to get to the hospital. Despite their nervousness, Fu Pei seemed to believe their story. The trio then took a taxi back to campus, with Fu Pei expressing concern for Tu Mo and walking away with her, leaving Wei Yi behind. Wei Yi looked disappointed and jealous as he watched them go and eventually threw away the hair tie he had brought for Tu Mo. After dropping Tu Mo off at the dormitory, Fu Pei coincidentally meets Wang Shan who has just returned from shopping. Wang Shan informs Fu Pei that Tu Mo no longer resides in the female dormitory as she has moved into an apartment. This news surprises Fu Pei who had no idea about Tu Mo's new living arrangements. Meanwhile, Wei Yi is packing his belongings when he receives a message from Tu Mo requesting the keys to his apartment. She explains that she left her keys inside the apartment and needs Wei Yi to keep her new living situation a secret. Wei Yi, still upset over the previous incident, reads the message but chooses not to reply. Feeling suspicious of Tu Mo, Fu Pei decided to secretly follow her. As he was spying on her, he saw Tu Mo and Wei Yi meet in front of the dormitory. Tu Mo questioned Wei Yi about why he did not reply to her message asking for the apartment keys, but Wei Yi pretended not to have received it. Wei Yi then asked Tu Mo to accompany him, knowing that she did not have the apartment keys with her. Unbeknownst to them, Fu Pei followed them and was shocked to see them breaking into the apartment together. When Tu Mo moves her things out of the female dormitory and into her new apartment, Fu Pei grows suspicious of her behavior and decides to follow her. He ends up seeing her meet up with Wei Yi, and later they both break into Wei Yi's apartment. Inside, Tu Mo starts packing while Wei Yi looks on with a sour expression. When Tu Mo notices, she asks him what's wrong, but he brushes it off. As she's hanging a blanket out to dry, it gets caught on a tree branch, and she asks Wei Yi for help retrieving it. Using a nearby branch, he manages to get it down, but as he pulls it away from her head, she feels a jolt of attraction towards him, and they share a lingering moment until interrupted by Fu Pei's car horn. 
the three sit down and talk, with Wei Yi trying to explain that there's nothing between him and Tumo, but Fu Pei remains skeptical. He puts on a brave face, telling his friends that they make a great couple and wishing them happiness, but inside he's heartbroken. As he drives away, he continues to daydream about Tumo and Wei Yi being together, even though he knows he needs to move on. Tumo tries to distract herself by washing a blanket but ends up injuring her hand. Wei Yi goes to buy wound plaster and leaves her to calm down. When he returns, he brings watermelon and the plaster for Tumo's wound. Meanwhile, Fu Pei drowns his sorrows in alcohol, and Wang Shan notices his sadness and offers to help him study for his next exam. Fu Pei lies and says he's upset about failing his exam, but in reality, he's heartbroken about Tumo. A few days had passed since Tumo's emotional breakdown, her mother, Ai Chi, was staying at their apartment. Tumo arrived home from work and slumped onto the sofa, feeling exhausted. Ai Chi commented that Tumo needed to sit more gracefully to attract Wei Yi's attention, but Tumo brushed it off and said she didn't care. However, when Wei Yi arrived home, Tumo suddenly sat up straight and tried to look more attractive, causing Ai Chi to smile knowingly. The next day, before Aichi left, she asked Tumo to sign a contract promising not to move out of the apartment. Tumo initially refused, but eventually gave in and signed the contract. As soon as Aichi left, Tumo quickly packed her belongings and decided to return to the dormitory. She sent Weiyi a message saying goodbye, and he appeared unhappy upon reading it. The days pass and Tumo is busy juggling work and thesis guidance, causing her to neglect her health and skip meals. Her friends are worried about her and express their concerns. Meanwhile, Wei Yi is feeling lonely in the apartment since Tumo left. He finds himself looking at the items she left behind, reminiscing about her. On the other hand, Tumo is kicked out of the dormitory for violating the rules after she had to wake up the head of the dormitory named Pei Lan in the middle of the night. Meanwhile, Wang Shan has been teaching Fu Pei for a few days to help him pass his exams. However, instead of focusing on his studies, Fu Pei asks for a gift to reunite with Tumo. Wang Shan is puzzled by his request and wonders why he did not just ask Tumo directly. Despite her confusion, Wang Shan decides to grant Fu Pei's request, and he takes the gifted test without realizing that Wang Shan is beginning to develop feelings for him. Tumo had finally made the decision to quit her internship, much to her boss's surprise. She was doing well in the job, but Tumo had realized that she wanted to become an advertising designer, a job that she was truly passionate about. Wei Yi's words of encouragement echoed in her mind, reminding her to follow her heart and do something that she truly enjoyed. In the meantime, Wei Yi found himself missing Tumo's presence more and more each day. He found himself standing in front of the female dormitory building on campus, feeling sad and longing to see her. Just as he was about to leave, Tumo appeared at the window and asked him why he was there. Wei Yi quickly came up with an excuse, saying that he was lost and hadn't been in that area for a long time. Tumo seemed to believe him, but Wei Yi couldn't help feeling a sense of disappointment that he couldn't be honest with her about his feelings. Sometime later, Tumo had just finished composing her script, feeling accomplished and happy with her work. However, her peace was suddenly interrupted by a call from Wei Yi, who told her to go back to their apartment because Ai Chi was going to visit. Tumo became anxious and began packing her belongings in a hurry, much to the surprise of her friend Wang Shan. Tumo explained that Ai Chi wanted to set her up with Wei Yi and that she was afraid of being forced to stay with him. Wei Yi had just informed her that Ai Chi was coming over, which made her feel even more pressured to leave. Wang Shan offered to accompany her and even suggested pretending that Tumo actually lived with Wei Yi so that Ai Chi wouldn't constantly drop by unannounced. Tumo agreed to the plan, feeling grateful for Wang Shan's help. In the meantime, Wei Yi had been eagerly anticipating Tumo's arrival to his apartment and had even cleaned up all the rooms to make it welcoming for her. However, his excitement was somewhat dampened when he realized that Tumo had invited her friend Wang Shan along with her. Upon Tumo's arrival, she asked about her mother, but Wei Yi informed her that Ai Chi had not come, causing Tumo to consider returning to her dormitory. Wang Shan stopped her and told her that someone else would be coming. Just then, the doorbell rang, and Fu Pei arrived with snacks and drinks for all of them. He greeted Tumo and Wei Yi as if nothing had happened between them. Since the atmosphere was awkward, Wang Shan suggested they watch a horror movie to break the tension. Wang Shan, Tumo, Fu Pei, and Wei Yi gathered to watch the movie, but they all looked frightened as they watched. Tumo was particularly scared, covering her face with a pillow during the scary scenes, much to Wei Yi's amusement. As the movie progressed, a ghost suddenly appeared on the screen, causing Wang Shan to accidentally push Tumo forward. Luckily, Wei Yi was quick to catch her, but Fu Pei couldn't help but feel jealous of their closeness. After the movie ended, Fu Pei drank even more and eventually became completely drunk. Wang Shan noticed and offered to take him home. The next day after the awkward night, Tumo is in a hurry to return to the dormitory, but Wei Yi seems hesitant to let her leave, providing various excuses until she ends up staying in his apartment. 
That evening, they head to the supermarket to buy food, and Tumo becomes interested in the array of pastries on display. The cake seller offers Wei Yi a sample of the cake, but he declines, citing his dislike for sweet foods. However, when Tumo offers him a bite, Wei Yi happily accepts, bringing a smile to the cake seller's face. As the days pass, they continue spending their time together. On one occasion, Tumo walks into Wei Yi's bedroom to find him still asleep. She tries to wake him up, but Wei Yi remains motionless. Tumo becomes captivated by his handsome face and checks his breathing by reaching out her hand, but Wei Yi suddenly opens his eyes, startling her. He asks why she's in his room, and Tumo explains that she called him to eat. Not long after, the two of them ate while watching a horror movie. Tumo cowered in fear, covering her face with a pillow. Wei Yi wondered why she was watching a movie that terrified her. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and Fu Pei arrived, wanting to talk to Tumo alone. After some time, Tumo and Fupei emerged from the apartment, heading to the park. As they sat together in the garden, Tumo suddenly sprinted back to the apartment, looking like she was escaping from Fupei's embrace. Upon her return, Wei Yi handed her a can of beer and inquired about Fupei's visit, a departure from his usual disinterest in others' affairs. Tumo was surprised by Wei Yi's sudden interest. Sometime before the events in the apartment, Tumo and Fupei had a conversation in the garden. Fupei revealed his desire to be with Tumo, but she rejected him, citing their incompatibility. Fupei then asked if she was in love with someone else, and Tumo admitted that she had stopped loving him a long time ago due to his failure to keep his promises. In particular, seeing him kiss Wang Shan was the final straw that made her decide to stop loving him. When Tumo was leaving, Fupei suddenly hugged her and pleaded with her for a second chance, promising to change his ways. Tumo reiterated that she no longer loved him, but Fupei persisted and tried to force a kiss on her. She pushed him away and left the garden, feeling disgusted and betrayed by his actions. After Tumo shared her story with Wei Yi, he became visibly angry and wanted to confront Fupei. However, Tumo stopped him and told him that she had already rejected Fupei and hit him when he tried to force her. Wei Yi was relieved to hear that Tumo had rejected Fupei and went to his room to hide his happiness. Meanwhile, Fu Pei was heartbroken and refused to answer Wang Shan's calls. When he returned to his dorm, Wang Shan was waiting for him and offered to treat his injured cheek. Fu Pei confessed to Wang Shan that he had expressed his love to Tu Mo, but she had rejected him. Wang Shan admitted that she had suspected Fu Pei had feelings for Tu Mo and claimed that she liked him enough to wait for him, even if he still had feelings for Tu Mo. Despite her offer, Fu Pei refused to be with Wang Shan because he still had feelings for Tu Mo. The next few days after the incident, Tumo and Wang Shan were busy working on their thesis. They bumped into Wei Yi and his new friend, Yu Yin, and Wei Yi introduced Yu Yin to Tumo. Tumo recognized Yu Yin as the girl who had helped Wei Yi find Shu's room before. However, Tumo couldn't help but feel a little sad seeing how close Wei Yi and Yu Yin were getting. On their way home, Wang Shan suddenly confessed to Tumo that she had already expressed her feelings to Fu Pei. Tumo sympathized with Wang Shan because she knew how Fu Pei was. One day, Tumo was excited about her birthday celebration with her friends at Wei Yi's apartment. They had a great time taking pictures and playing games, and Wei Yi couldn't stop staring at her lovingly. During one of the games, Tumo lost and had to make eye contact with someone wearing the same color clothes as her for 20 seconds. Wei Yi was wearing clothes that were almost the same color as hers, so they had to stare at each other until they both became lost in their own world. The party wound down and the women had to help the drunken men get home. Tumo had to clean up after Wei Yi, who was so drunk that she couldn't even wake him up to get him to sleep in the bedroom. She eventually gave up and let him sleep on the sofa. Later that night, Tumo couldn't sleep and went to check on Wei Yi, who was sleeping while sitting. She tried to lay him down, but his body almost fell, and she caught him. At that moment, Wei Yi suddenly woke up and kissed Tumo before falling back asleep. Though she was annoyed with him, Tumo still took care of him and made sure he was comfortable. The next morning, Tumo woke up feeling excited and happy after dreaming about Wei Yi's confession of love. She was looking forward to seeing him and hearing his real feelings. As she stepped out of her room, she saw Wei Yi already waiting for her at the dining table, ready with breakfast. Wei Yi started talking about the party last night, which made Tumo's heart race with anticipation, but to her disappointment, he only apologized for leaving her to clean up after the drunken partygoers. Tumo couldn't hide her disappointment, and she tried to bring up the kiss, hoping Wei Yi would remember and confess his love for her. But to her dismay, Wei Yi had no recollection of the kiss and was confused by Tumo's question. Tumo couldn't believe it and was annoyed by his forgetfulness. She rushed away from the table, leaving Wei Yi baffled and confused about what he had done wrong. One day, Tumo mustered up the courage to tell Wei Yi that he had kissed her while he was drunk. 
Wei Yi was caught off guard and had absolutely no recollection of the incident. He desperately tried to recall the moment and asked himself if he really did kiss Tumo. In an attempt to jog his memory, Tumo brought a few cans of beer and pressured Wei Yi to drink them. Despite his initial reluctance, he eventually gave in to her demands and started drinking. However, even after consuming the beer, Wei Yi still couldn't remember the incident. Tumo decided to take matters into her own hands and brought her face closer to his, hoping that it would spark his memory. To her surprise, Wei Yi did begin to recall the moment and even tried to kiss her again. However, Tumo prevented him and went straight to her room, feeling overwhelmed with emotion. After the incident of the drunken kiss, Wei Yi realized his feelings for Tu Mo and decided to confess his love to her. He sought advice from his friend Jiang and came up with a plan to express his love through a physics and math formula love letter. Meanwhile, Tu Mo returned home to find that the apartment was experiencing a power outage, and she was left without heating in the cold weather. She called Wei Yi and asked him to buy a room warmer, to which he agreed. Later, Wei Yi called her downstairs and told her that it was snowing outside. Excitedly, Tu Mo opened her window and went out to enjoy the snow. Unbeknownst to her, Wei Yi was watching her lovingly. Wei Yi finally mustered up the courage to approach Tu Mo and present her with the love letter. However, she didn't understand the physics and math formulas used in the letter, and Wei Yi became flustered while attempting to explain them. Frustrated, Tumo returned the letter to him, leaving Wei Yi disappointed that his grand gesture of love didn't quite go as planned. The two of them then bought snacks from the street vendor even though Wei Yi still looked still gloomy. Tumo didn't seem to understand his attempts at confessing his feelings. He noticed that Tumo was only wearing thin clothes and house slippers in the cold winter weather, and the kind hawker had given them extra food when he saw Tumo's condition. Feeling worried about her health, Wei Yi offered Tumo his jacket and helped her roll up her sleeves, which made her feel touched by his caring gesture. However, as she remembered their previous kiss, she quickly pulled her hand away from his grasp, feeling conflicted about her own feelings toward Wei Yi. Back in the apartment, Wei Yi tried once again to express his feelings, this time through a poem, hoping that Tu Mo would finally understand his intentions. But once again, Tu Mo failed to grasp his meaning, leaving Wei Yi feeling disappointed and questioning whether Tu Mo actually had any feelings for him. A few days had passed since the incident at the street vendor, and Wei Yi and Tu Mo were having breakfast together. Tu Mo took a deep breath and finally gathered the courage to ask Wei Yi if he liked her. Wei Yi was taken aback by the sudden question and was momentarily speechless, coughing awkwardly. Tu Mo, feeling embarrassed and thinking that her feelings were unrequited, waited for Wei Yi to answer. Finally, Wei Yi revealed that he did indeed like her. Tu Mo was overcome with emotions and simply lowered her head in embarrassment. Wei Yi asked again if Tu Mo liked him, and she shyly hinted that she did. The tension broke and they both felt a sense of relief that their feelings were mutual. Tumo, feeling ecstatic, decided to retreat to her room to bask in her happiness. She picked out her best clothes and adorned herself as beautifully as possible. Meanwhile, Wei Yi was in the kitchen, lost in a daydream, and completely unaware that he had spilled water on his pants, soaking them through. As time passed, Wei Yi and Tumo's relationship grew stronger, and they became inseparable. They supported each other through their studies and personal struggles, and their love only continued to blossom. After graduating from university, they entered the workforce and continued to build a life together. A few months later, Wei Yi proposed to Tumo, and she happily accepted. They started planning their wedding, and it was a beautiful affair. They exchanged vows in front of their families and friends and promised to love each other for eternity. In the end, Wei Yi and Tumo lived happily ever after with a love that had stood the test of time. They were grateful for each other and for the journey that had brought them together. The moral of the story is that if you want to find true love, just share your snacks with a stranger and give them your jacket. Who knows, they might just be the one you've been looking for all along.